Hey, how's it going, folks? I'm Dan from The Breakdown, and uh, today I'm joined by Dusty, and I play guitar. Dan Briggs, and I play bass. Blake Richardson, I play drums. A lot of bands, whether it's just in the hardcore metal scene or music in general, are usually putting out three to four minute songs, but you guys are putting out music that's five minutes and over. Are you trying to get fans to listen to not just a single one song out of an album and trying to direct them more towards listening to an album as a whole? Yeah, totally. I, I guess that started with Colors, really, because we kind of wrote that as a, a whole massive kind of piece of music um, where you kind of had to you know, start to finish listening to it. We took it out on tour that way and played the whole thing. Um, but yeah, I, you know, my favorite albums by bands are the ones that are you, know, you can listen to start to finish. And right. They're interesting the whole way through and kind of presented as such. So. Um, is that something you guys, when you were writing Colors, is that something that you, you started out thinking, hey, when we go into this, you know, this is the idea we had, or was it just when you got in the studio, that's just how it came out, and when you were done, you were looking at it, and you were like, great, this is awesome. It was just kind of, after we wrote the first song, uh, which was Into the Sky, the way it ended, we were like, oh, well, this could go right into this other thing. And I guess it was just right then that we kind of figured out that was probably what we were going to do. As we ended each song, it kind of was like, oh, well, we could go into this, uh, or, you know, and then when we went backwards, we were like, oh, we could do this leading into this song. So. Do you find it's in a generation, or I guess in a time where people are looking for quick entertainment for just a couple minutes, do you find it almost challenging to be able to try to grab a listener and take them through a song that is seven, ten, or through a whole album? Do you find it difficult to do that, or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially kids today, like the stuff that's kind of popular now. It's very verse, chorus, bridge, three-minute songs, quick to the point. It's kind of like that's sort of the actually on this tour. That's sort of the fan base we're kind of playing to. Right. You know, we played to that kind of crowd before. Yeah. So it's definitely. I mean, it's it's a challenge. Yeah, I'd say as far as getting attracting new fans to. Is this something? So used to that. Is this something you enjoy doing though? Is that if you view the scene or if you view music as a bunch of people are doing this and we're trying to do this, is it fun to try to grab people? who may only listen to a certain type of thing and try to bring them to listen to Between the Bear and Me? Yeah, I yeah, think yeah, so. That's I think it's interesting, you know? <laughs> and, and how have you guys been, I mean, obviously you guys have been in the scene for a while. People know who you are. I said you're really, really respected. Do you have fans that come up to you and be like, you know, hey, great job tonight. You know, I was never, I knew who you guys were, but I wasn't really into it, but oh, yeah. really interested. Yeah, that happens pretty much nightly. And does that, yeah, that, that makes you want to keep producing you keep doing what you're doing, right? That's almost yeah. an affirmation yeah. of the artistic process, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, yeah that's like the, ba the best compliment you can get. Kids that say, you know, oh, I've never heard you guys, or I'm not really into that sort of stuff, but you guys are great. You know, it's, it's kind of cool. You guys named off a lot of different bands, but do you listen to bands in the hardcore scene and take what they're doing and the direction that they're moving in and make a conscious effort maybe to do something that's a little bit different? Not really. Um, I think for the most part we're all pretty uh, on on the outside looking in from the, the, the hardcore scene these days. Yeah. Uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you five modern hardcore bands probably right now. Yeah, honestly. I mean. Doing a tour like this, honestly, it's, it's kind of cool because you get to, you know, like I, I had never heard Cancer Bats or Architects, and, uh, and it's, it's kind of cool, you know, doing a tour like this because you get to see new bands. You're actually, like into those bands. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that's cool. cool. Yeah. Kind of out of touch a little bit. Is being on a tour like this where you said you listen to bands, you get to see bands play, and you get to see how they perform, is it something that you can take, like, oh, yeah, I see this band is doing this, I see this band is doing this, I really like it? Do you make a conscious effort to take those things and to incorporate? into what you guys are doing, or do you already feel like you have it down pretty well and you're just kind of going for it? Like we, we, just, yeah. just, yeah. we just do our thing. Do thing yeah. yeah, we go. We kind of like carve a little niche. But, I mean, yeah. we always still pick little things here and right. there from, you know, from stuff that we think is very uh, influential now, because as far as modern crap, it's kind of...
guys have put out uh, the great misdirect. Are you guys planning on writing new music, and when, when can fans be looking forward to that? Yeah, I guess uh, I guess this fall, you know, after this tour, we're we're going home and uh, focus on writing you know, kind of a, an EP, uh, you know, which, uh, which will be fun to yeah. kind of focus on a, a shorter amount of music over like you know a three four month writing period. Yeah. You know, so we can really listen to the songs a million times and just tear them apart and do whatever we have to do to make you know, the best music we can. Is there a direction that you guys already have in mind for where you want to take it musically or is it when you get to the studio kind of hammer it out then? It's kind of a, a misdirection. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. uh, I like to that. No, that's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, usually whatever everyone writes. Like everyone comes together with riffs or whatever when they start writing and we kind of just piece it together and go from there and, you know, just, we won't really know how it turns out until we the songs are done and then we kind of can sit back and listen to them and, you know realize pick them apart you realize yeah first of all realize how terrible they are and then <laughs> from there is it when you, you write a song and you feel that it's, it's really good or you really like it and then you hear it and you're like wow that, that that's not what I expected it to be luckily we kind of spend enough time uh, I feel like that that really happens I yeah think, spend enough time either working on parts on our own before we bring them in or you know arranging stuff together I feel like maybe we have a good enough sense to where we won't do something completely horrible yeah. thankfully I feel like that hasn't really happened in the last two records yeah. yet you know uh, is it <laughs> 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 <It's> actually <laughs> for, uh, for folks who are watching this video and they may be a little uh, they may not be familiar with me and your music what is one song that they could go and listen to on your MySpace page that you really think would encompass what Between the Bear and Me is? If you could pick one. Maybe you guys all have Mordecai. different ones. Mordecai. 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 Come on. Um, probably White Walls. White Walls. Yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's a safe bet. It's got everything. Yep. Not at all. Do you guys have a time frame for the new album to come out? By the end of the year, should we expect gonna, next year? We're gonna be recording in like December. Okay. So sometime next year. Okay. Yeah, spring. Whenever we, say. whenever we feel like it. Yeah. Really. Hey, that's a good way to do it, right? Yeah. yeah Whatever's yeah. comfortable. Yeah. We'll see. You know, we're gonna go home. We're gonna enjoy being home. Write some music. Record it. Get back out on the road do, again. Yeah. Just do yeah maybe. Maybe. You guys, maybe, maybe guys, this could be the last story. You never know. <laughs> that's the thing. We have nothing booked. We have nothing. We have no plans. We don't write an EP, but we don't have any direction in life. We're just, we just kind of floating right now. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, I appreciate you guys' time. Thanks for being with us. Uh, make sure to check out the band. They're going to be on the rest of the Cool Tour for this week. Uh, like you said, myspace.com backslash between the buried and me to check them out. Also, you can find them on Facebook and Twitter as well. We appreciate you guys uh, being with us today. Best of luck on the rest of the tour, Thank and we'll so see much. you guys next time. All right? So long.